All right, we'll follow the same format and we'll start it with Mark Weiser followed by Palmer Tomes. Warren, how are you? I'm great, how are y'all doing? Doing well. I wanna ask you kind of halfway through the season how you would assess uh, how this offensive line has done. Uh, I think that this this uh, this season there's been some, some highs and lows. Uh, we've been able to run the ball effectively the past two games, which has been uh, very huge for us. That's always a point of emphasis for us, but uh, we try to take every single game uh, just be the best we can and just play the standard that we always try to set. Warren, Coach Smart has said for a while now that Kentucky is always one of y'all's most physical games. What about it is about this defensive line is it that is such a challenge? Oh, man, they uh, – he's absolutely right about that. They they are always one of the most physical games that we play. Uh, they're just hard-nosed. They're tough, uh, just like our defensive line, just like our offensive line, both sides of the, the ball. The line of scrimmage is always uh, just tough guys that are, are trying to, to get down, get dirty, and, and just play the uh, physical style of football that we, we try to play. All right, let's go to Anthony Dasher, followed by Connor Riley. <clears throat> hey, Warren, good to see you. Are there any, any special things that you do, uh, I guess, as an individual to, to block out all the noise that the coach is always telling you all not to pay attention to? Uh, that's a good question. You know, I, I try not to uh, stay on social media too much, especially during the season. Uh, you know, you, I feel like there's a lot of stuff that you can read that will kind of flood your mind with, with either bad ideas or uh, just bad things that are, are not uh, positive or any sort of way. So I usually try to stay off social media and then uh, really just whatever the coaches are telling us for our directives for this this week and, and what we need to focus on, I usually try to stick to that. Hey, Warren, what was y'all sort of reaction when Jamari went down and then obviously Broderick Jones stepping in? What did you make of how he played, and especially there in the second half? Uh, initially, when I saw him go down, uh, I was worried, of course, because that's my brother. And uh, I, I hate to see him go down, especially the leader that he is. But uh, the good thing is that Jamari is OK and uh, he's working. He's fighting to get back as soon as he possibly can. But uh, Broderick, he stepped in against the uh, Auburn, which is a, a fantastic opponent and uh, their stadium, and he's able to go out and there perform um, at a high level, which was really encouraging to see. Let's go to Chip Towers, followed by Seth Emerson. Warren, I, I guess you chalk it up to it's you never know how things are going to work out. It's really amazing when I think about your story. You're expecting to be the starting center. The hand thing happens. Go to the first game. The Tate Ratledge things happen. Here we are, seven games in, and you're about to start your seventh game at right guard. Just tell me about how that sudden transition has gone to this point and then how much of a advocate and partner have you become with Cedric, uh, who's moved into that spot since then and apparently done pretty well at it. Yeah, that, uh, man, that, that initial when my, my, my hand injury happened, that was a, a whirlwind. You know, I, I initially, initially when it happened, we got the x-rays, found out I needed to have surgery. I thought I was going to be out for an extended amount of time. And I thought, man, like my season might be over. I don't know what the, what's going on. So mentally, it was very tough for me. But I had my brothers um, on the team, uh, family members and, and uh, loved ones, just encouraging me and, and telling me to keep fighting. And then uh, with our uh, – <clears throat> with our medical staff here, they do such a fantastic job. So they're able to get me back. But, you know, I was going to Clemson, really not expecting to play very much because I had just gotten cleared that that week. So it, it was, for me, it was kind of like, okay, like how is it going to work out? I kind of need to feel this out. But then seeing Tate go down, uh, knowing that it was time for me to step up and then seeing my hand hold, hold up, it's it was the craziest whirlwind I, I, I could think of. And um, going into my seventh game, I think that just trying to get more comfortable uh, every single day and then just really trying to perfect my technique um, things that I can do just to, with my foot footsteps and uh, hand placement and, and pad level things that I can do just to constantly improve is what I'm all about and then um, Cedric uh, the great thing about you know me not the great thing that I went down but the great thing about me going down uh, was that Cedric was able to come in and uh, get better tremendously and that was really encouraging to see because he's been able to step up. Um, so I'm really proud of him for how he's handled the situation as well. And um, I think that me being in there with said, we're able to kind of bounce ideas off each other, you know, where a certain mic point should be or protection should be at. So uh, having us in there, um, you know, I can check him if I think he might not be making the right call and he can do the same thing for me uh, if, if he doesn't agree with me. So I think it's a good combo. Thank you. 
important I'm, I'm asking this kind of uh, facetiously. Uh, how did your all's lives change after ascending to number one? Does, does food taste better? Do you guys get comped at restaurants? Do you hear from people you haven't heard from in years or did nothing change? Uh, um, I think for me personally, nothing really changed. Uh, I mean, obviously seeing that, that number one is, is great and it's something that we all strive to be. But then again, this is uh, the seventh game of the season. It's, it's not the national championship. We're not at the end of the season yet. So what we got to do is we got to keep taking every single day, every single week and, and just continue on progression. You know, we have to take – take time and keep getting better. That's the most important part. So uh, I don't think anything in specific for me has changed um, except the fact that I just want to continue to work hard and uh, continue to focus on Kentucky. Let's go to Jake Rowe, followed by Tyler Griffith. Warren, I wanted to ask you about the guy beside you, Warren uh, McClendon. And, you know, it seems like there are a lot of guys up front to get asked about and talked about. What's it like playing next to Warren? He seems like a really quiet guy and, and somebody that just doesn't really show up um, or get talked about a whole lot. And I guess that's a good thing for an offensive lineman. Uh, he definitely has the, the offensive lineman mindset where, you know, when he's not on the field, he's just cool, calm, collected, uh, just very laid back, easy going, fun to be around. But uh, on the field and especially during the games, uh, Warren gets into it. You know, he, he likes to, he likes to get after it. He, his whole emotions change, you know, he, he turns to a different person. So that's always fun, especially during the games because Warren almost comes uh, alive, which is, is really cool to play next to because the way that he brings energy also gives me energy. Hey, can you talk for a second about who some of the leaders are on the offensive side of the ball? And do you consider yourself a vocal leader? I, I, I try to consider myself to be a leader. Um, I definitely am someone who tries to lead by example, always trying to give as much effort as I possibly can, always try to do the little things right. Uh, if things need to be said, then I definitely uh, want to stand a step up and, and say things to correct them. But uh, the great thing about this team in general uh, and the offense in general is we have a lot of people that are willing to do that. Um, of course, we have uh, Jamari, we have uh, Stetson, JT, we have um, – <clears throat> You know, even Lad, we have, uh, you know, Broderick at times, and we have Cedric at times. We, ha we have a lot of guys that are willing to step up and uh, vocally correct and vocally be able to speak out about things that they think need to be fixed. Got time for one more question, and we'll go to Ryan Curley. Hey, Warren, when you're, when you're guarding guys like Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter, Devontae White in practice, does that – you know, playing guys of that caliber, does that give you confidence to go in against other teams? You know, what do you kind of think about that? Absolutely. Uh, every single day, uh, you know, I, I consider them uh, one of the best um, in the SEC in the nation. So the, the fact that I get to go uh, against some of the best teams in line that I could possibly go against it, it is amazing. And it, and it gives me confidence. But, but you know, the great thing about Kentucky is they also have a great defense line. So, um, it's just another challenge for me this weekend with uh, the defensive line of Kentucky and having uh, Jordan and, and J.D. and, and Devontae uh, to get me ready for that. It's, uh, it's been really great. All right, Warren, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you all.